Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Narda Onyx. Narda Onyx was born on December the 20th, 1931 in Estonia. By the time she was 11 years old, Europe was in full grips of the Second World War. To escape capture by the Russian army, she and her family pretended to be German. They were able to get help from the Swedish Red Cross, eventually settling in Sweden and then immigrating to London. She had begun her acting career in Sweden. While in London performing on stage, she met and married fellow immigrant George Veranda, and they, and they immigrated to Canada. They moved to America in 1956, and her career took off in television. She became a United States citizen in 1961. She became a popular character actress, working steadily through the 1960s. In 1964, she wrote a biography about her friend Johnny Weissmuller. It was called Water, World, and Weissmuller. In 1966, she retired from the entertainment industry altogether. She and her husband moved to Ventura, California. They lived a regular life. She died in her home on May the 9th, 1991, at the age of 59 years old. During her 20-year career in the entertainment industry, Narda Angst appeared on 27 television shows and was in four films. Now, what I have for you today is a classic episode of the Beverly Hillbillies. It's titled Duke Takes a Wife, and it has Narda playing a poodle's owner. So I hope that you enjoy it, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Have a great today, and a Show me how to play your lap organ someday? Sure, honey. Like my ma showed me, and like her ma showed her, and her ma before that. Sure is old, ain't it? Nigh on to 200 years. Granny, reckon you can whomp up a mess of spring tonic for old Duke and me? We is feeling like the hind quarters of bad luck. I know what'll prick old Duke up. Can I get it to him, Granny? If he wants it. Of course he wants it, don't you, Duke? Look at here, Duke. Look at this nice bone. <laughs> oh, he must be sick. Well, uh, ain't exactly sick, Hilly May. We just both feel an ornery, dragged out, don't give two shucks for nothing. <laughs> Granny, maybe you could brew up some of that tonic. Sure. I could brew up a pot of Choctaw root, some cherry bark bitters, some red clover blossoms and sassafras. <laughs> but I ain't gonna do it. Why not? Cause that won't help what's ailing you and Duke. Well, what do you reckon we got? Ellie May, you go on outside. I want to talk to your pa. Yes, my friend. <laughs> it ain't what you got. It's what you ain't got that's ailing you. Well, what is it we ain't got? Now, I could tell you in three words. Female company. <laughs> Female company. Got a house full of females. You, Ellie Mae, Pearl. I ain't talking about female kin folks. <laughs> Granny, is you suggesting that you want you? <laughs> Granny, me and Duke is too old for that courting and sparking nonsense. You ain't half too old. <laughs> and a fine figure of a man too. A heap lot better than them slick-haired, shiny-shoed, sweet-smelling city dudes. <laughs> Talking plumb silly. You gonna make that tonic or ain't you? I ain't. Come on, Duke. Let's just go hunting. Let me get our blood stirred up. Depends on what you hunt. <laughs> How'd you like to be about that? <laughs> See? Yeah, that's all right. We get out in the woods. Get to smelling bobcat tracks. Reckon you get the idea? 
Well, if you want to get the idea, you go next door to the Drysdales and smell some orange blossoms. I think they're getting ready for a wedding. Drysdale? Hmm, wonder who's getting hitched. I don't know. Must be some kin of Miss Drysdale's. She's been frolicating around like a chicken in the corn crib. <laughs> Happy day. Greetings, all. Mrs. Drysdale. Margaret, I've asked you not to barge in here while I'm working. Oh, pish posh. What's more important than our darling getting married? Sonny's getting married? Oh, no, 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 dear. Claude is getting married. <laughs> Congratulations, Claude. Margaret, dogs do not get married. They mate. Milburn, don't be crude. <laughs> I prefer to consider Claude and his beautiful Parisian bride as entering wedlock. Parisian bride? Darling, I told you last week I was having a bride for Claude flown in from Paris. <laughs> really, Milburn, you don't listen. All you think about is your silly old bag. Forgive me, dear. <laughs> Congratulations, Claude. <laughs> His nail polish may not be dry. <laughs> He's just come from the poodle parlor. He had a clip and a manicure and a dye job. I thought he was a different color. <laughs> Becoming, isn't it? And so natural. Only him's hairdresser knows for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Hathaway, I'll need you today. Oh, what for? A bridesmaid? <laughs> oh, of course not, Milburn. I'll need her as an interpreter. You see, Mademoiselle Denise speaks almost no English. Very few poodles do. <laughs> oh, really, Milburn, you just don't pay attention. Mademoiselle Denise is the owner of Claude's bride-to-be. She's flying her here personally for the nuptials. Well... Let's all go home and meet the bride. <laughs> well, don't you want to be there? Oh, oh, more than anything else in the world, dear, but I, I'd better stay here and work. After all, I have Claude's wedding to pay for, and soon there'll be other little mouths to feed. Oh, yes. Isn't that a thrilling thought? <laughs> Milburn, people won't call me a grandmother, will they? Oh, of course not. Of course not. I'll call you a nut. Now, get outside, both of you. House ain't no place for cleaning guns. I got everything spick and span, and I'd like it to stay that way for a while. Well, now, let's look her. Wait a minute. My hat's in there and my box of cartridges. Here's your hat. There's your cartridges. <laughs> I swear to goodness, if he ain't the cleanest woman, she had her way. She'd have slip covers on the, on the wall. Don't you let her get you down, I do. This city living is what's got us feeling bottom heavy. Just wait till Jethro gets back. We get him to drive us way out in the woods. The three of us will light out through the tall timber. We'll have us a high old time. How's that sound to you? Hmm? Get through, better get here pretty quick. Pardon, monsieur. Est-ce que c'est la maison de Madame Drysdale? Excuse me, ma'am, but I didn't quite get what you said there. Is uh, this the Drysdale home? Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, Drysdale Place is the uh, next one over yonder. Yonder? Not them tall trees there. Come this way and I'll show it to you. Now, sight twixt them first and second trees there, you catch a glimpse of the Drysdale house. See? Ah, oui. Now, you come right further, you can see more of it. Was 
serait très aimable, monsieur. Je suis votre débiteuse. No offense, ma'am, but you're kind of hard to understand. Where about you from? Je ne vous comprends pas. Oh, well, I bet you it's a nice place. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Yeah, well, thank you. Same to you and many more of them. Uh, you're a mighty handsome looking woman. Smell pretty too, didn't you, Duke? Duke? Where'd you go, Duke? Granny. Granny. Granny! Yeah, Pearl. Do you know who's got a secret, sweetheart? No, Pearl. But hum it for me. I'll pick it up. <laughs> it ain't a song, Granny. It's Janet. She's got a lady friend. And she's pretty, too. Well, the old rooster took my advice. <laughs> hey, Granny, hey, Pearl, look at old Duke. He's got a new friend. <laughs> well, by dingies, they both took my advice. <laughs> I reckon maybe I'll take it next myself. <laughs> Paul, have you seen Duke's new friend, Cotton Patch? Well, no, I ain't. Come on up here and let's take a look at you. Ain't she pretty? I named her Cotton Patch because her hair grows in clumps. Well, I reckon it was clipped that way, Ellie Mae, but the fellow that done it must have had the clippers in one hand and a jug in the other. He missed the biggest part of her. Oh, Duke sure has took a fancy to her. He dug up four of his best bones and give them to her. Well, she done a lot for Duke, too. Before she come along, Duke was feeling lower in a snake's belly in a wagon rut. But look at him now. Yeah. He's, oh, look at this here collar that Cotton Patch was wearing. I was afraid she'd catch it in the bushes running after Duke, so I took it off. Mmm, ain't that fancy. Duke, are you sure you ain't after that girl just for her money? <laughs> Them them's diamonds, Paul? Might could be. Ellie Mae, this dog belongs to somebody. Somebody that sets great store by her, too. Folks don't just get... Colette! Colette! Quel merveilleux! Vous avez trouvé mon chien! Bien I reckon this must be the party that owns Cotton Patch. I'll put her in the car for you, ma'am. <laughs> there you are, ma'am. Granny, I tell you, I seen it with my own eyes. Jed and this handsome-looking city woman walking along, arm in arm, just like they was a pair of lovers. <laughs> oh, that's sly old Dickens. Where was he? Right out front there and in broad daylight. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you. Right where they was. <laughs> Pearl Bodine, shame on you. You gonna spy on your own cousin? I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Monsieur, je ne sais pas comment vous remercier, mais peut-être que ça vous démontre mes vrais sentiments. <laughs> Uh, here's something I reckon you'd like to have. Oh, monsieur. Je vous remercie encore une fois. Mille fois merci. <laughs> merci, mon ami. Did you see what he gave her? A diamond choker. Yeah, it must have cost old Jan a fortune. <laughs> Here, here we go. <laughs> Have this place is shining. Hey, Granny. Yeah, Pearl. I found you had a ball driving up in a fancy car and a hugging and a kissing you. Uh, wouldn't you want your kinfolk to meet that bow? I sure would, Pearl. Especially if I was given that bow expensive presents. <laughs> you mean like a diamond choker? <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh -huh. You know, I hear tell that French women is real fond of jewelry. <laughs> if you two are trying to make something out of what just happened outside, you can leave off before you get started. All I was doing was returning that lady's dog, and that diamond choker was a dog's collar. Say, <laughs> hey, Granny. Yeah, Pearl. 
What do you reckon that red stuff was smeared on Jed's cheek? I reckon he cut himself returning that dog. <laughs> Either that or his lady friend scratched herself on his whiskers when she kissed him. <laughs> That must be real love, Pearl. If you can kiss a man with a crop of stubble on his face like that. <laughs> you better believe it, Granny. <laughs> I decorated it all myself. I used as much French silk as I could find. The orange blossoms are from our own trees. And these are Claude's trophies. Uh, ce sont à Claude. Oh, bon. Well, if everything is in order, I'd like to have Claude come in. He's never seen the bridal suite. Nor his bride, of course. It's bad luck. The chamber. Est elle comfortable? Ah, bien sûr. Mademoiselle Denise is delighted with the appointment. Marion! I've arranged with the butler to release Claude as soon as he hears the music. I'll start the record now. This is such a beautiful moment. I just know I'm going to cry. <laughs> You said you and old Duke was feeling all dragged out and ornery and you wanted to go hunting to get your blood to stir, and that's what you said. Well, I ain't saying it now. Why don't you go ahead without me? But I don't need to go hunting to stir my blood. It's already stirring. Well, now stir it some more. Well, you keep turning away from me, Uncle Jed. <laughs> Done shave. Hey, Ma, Granny, Ellie Mae, come see Uncle Jed shaved in the middle of the day. This roll, hush. Ain't you never seen a man with a shave before? Not you. Not unless there's a wedding or a funeral to go to. <laughs> Looky yonder at Uncle Jed. Oh, great clouds of buggy dust. He's got load off his stubble. Hemmed his mustache. In the middle of the day. Tarnation. Look at his hair. Oh, you're pretty. Ain't it stylish? It's got smell them on it. <laughs> Things have come to a sorry state when a man can't shave his face and comb his hair without his family cackling like a bunch of chickens at a new worm. Why, Cousin Jed, that ain't a nice thing to call your sweetie. <laughs> Jed got a sweetie? City woman, talks foreign, drives a sporty car. Dresses to the teeth, wears jewelry, given to her by your Uncle Romeo. Oh, I mean, Jed. <laughs> Diggity! Oh, am I gonna have a new mom? Oh, you ain't. I ain't going to listen to more of this uh, nonsense talk. <laughs> Howdy, ladies. Mademoiselle Denise, Monsieur Clampets. Nous nous connaissons. Oh, you two have met. Yes, ma'am. Mais Monsieur Clampé a changé. She says you look different. Oh, shucks, just because I mowed off my whiskers and combed my hair. <laughs> Very becoming. <laughs> oh, will you keep you here? He's upsetting the wedding ceremony at the Drysdales. It ain't her to get married, is it? Oh, no, indeed. <laughs> Monsieur, je vous préfère comme vous êtes. Sans bar. <laughs> we have to hurry. Now, you will keep you here. Yes, ma'am. Monsieur Clampett, garderez le chien ici. Ah, vous êtes toujours si aimable. 
et obligeant. the bride's nerves. They'll be right in. Good, good. This delay is so difficult for Claude. I hope he doesn't get one of his migraines. Well, the perfume. I want to eradicate every vestige of that hurried beast from next door. Claude must never know. What in the name of F-H-A is this? <laughs> You've come for the ceremony. No, I've come for my secretary. <laughs> Margaret, this used to be my den. And there's where my TV set was. And no, it's a love nest for Claude and his beautiful bride. No, it doesn't. It's real you. You can hardly stand it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> this is Mademoiselle Denise. And this is my... Yes, yes, we've met. Uh, come on, Miss Hathaway, let's get back to the bank. Oh, no, no, dear. Claude is about to meet his new bride. Would you like to give her away? Can I give them both away? Oh, no, dear boy. <laughs> Darling, you bring Claude in. He'll feel more secure with his daddums at his side. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, the dog next to... Le chien de nos voisins, Duke. I'll close the window so that... We... Oh, here's the handsome groom. This is a magic moment. <laughs> oh, what a cruel blow. Quick, Milburn, call the psychiatrist. Yours or his? <laughs> Is we going hunting or are you going court? What are you talking about? I ain't going courting. Then we's going hunting. Julia, I didn't want to go hunting. Now you go yourself and take Duke with you. Well, Duke don't want to go hunting. Well, he's outside right now, frisking around with that there white dog that Ellie May calls Cotton Patch. <laughs> she bet. She sure is. Old Duke's happier than a cat at a fish fry. He's running and jumping and just playing around and... <laughs> what are you holding under the table, Uncle Jay? Oh, none of your business. Now get out. <laughs> Oh, you're polishing your shoes. <laughs> hey, Mom, Granny, Ellie Mae, Uncle Jim's polishing his shoes, and it ain't even Sunday. <laughs> you, know, you do make more racket than a jackass in a tin bar. <laughs> Blair, this is the nosiest family a man was ever burdened with. Well, look at them shoes, all fresh oiled. That's in your laces, too. And them's his best socks. And it ain't even Sunday. Sun, every day Sunday when you're in love. Now that takes a rag off in the bush. I ain't in love, and I just oiled my shoes because they were squeaking. They've been squeaking for 15 years, as I remember. You ain't never oiled them. <laughs> Youngins, you go and get outside. Granny and me's got some grown-up things to say. I ain't gonna listen to no more food. Now, Jed, you hadn't ought to fight against romance. You're still young and good-looking. And you're rich, too. Yeah. And with that, you don't need young and good-looking. <laughs> that reminds me. I dumped something out of the mothballs for you. Ha, 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 ha. Your necktie and your derby that you wore when you came a courting Rose Ellen, all duded up and stepping out like a chicken in high oats. I got something for you too, Jay. How boiled and starched your fancy courting shirt! <laughs> I'm going to put this stuff back where it belongs, and I don't want to hear no more words about Romy. Where are you going? I'm going out and dig myself a root cellar and crawl in and lock it so I can get a little peace and quiet. <laughs> what you say, Mrs. Drysdale? I said Claude's honor has been besmirched, and I demand satisfaction. <laughs> Poor Claude is in a state of shock. <laughs> Now I demand that Claude's bride be returned immediately. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ellie will bring her right over. Phew. Eddie, you better get that poodle over there fast. I sure will. Hold on, Ellie B. <laughs> Eddie, 
I want to take that dog back to the Drysdales, and Duke, you're coming along. What? It seems to me that critters ought to have the same right as people to pick their own company. So we're going over there, and Cotton Patch, you can make up your mind who you want to court. Just like I made up mine. <laughs>